the first set of rods I built from scratch are lightweight jigging rods. You'll see them here being used by my mate Emily. We jig with wire, 300 feet of wire and the jigs you just saw, which are two ounce jigs, and a substantial reel like you see here. And you're gonna see Emily with two of the fish we caught when she first used these rods. So Emily, what do you think of the action of these rods? It's pretty nice. Yeah, can't wait to get a fish on one of them. Really feel it. We've used it quite a bit. We've taken some fish up to 36, 38 inches with them. I'll tell you, you think you've got a, you're on a spinning rod at that point. Emily has been fishing with me since she was 11 years old. Her father used to bring her out quite a bit. So she's been uh, jigging a lot and she knows exactly what's needed to, to hook up. She really likes these rods. Um, she's become a very good mate. You'll see the fish right there is about 32, 33 inches, a nice dinner fish. And she really enjoyed the, uh, the action of these rods. And you see the action she uses to jig. And that's important that the action still be there, even though the rod is relatively limber. As you can see the action of the rod there. This allows the energy of the fish to be transmitted into the rod rather than the angler, and that's what I was looking to do. Start them now. Okay, um, yep, very good, Miss M. I'm out of gear. Yes. Just play them. Yep. That's a nice fish you got on there, um. Okay. I'll come down and get it. I'll Those last clips you saw when I first built the rods was 2013. This was last summer, uh, summer of 2016. Here's Emily's on a real good fish, and you see Fran, who used to work at the Goose Hummock. He's on a nice fish. You can see the bend of these rods, and you'll see the fish when they come in. We were fishing down by Barnstable, and there's some big bass down there, and you'll see them being caught. And these rods, I tell you, worked absolutely perfectly. Here you see Randy Rockwood, his wife, and his daughter, Rory. His uh, wife's got a fish on right now. It's a bluefish. She's using, again, this lightweight jigging rod. The other guys in the other charter boats use a very, very heavy rod, very stiff and heavy wire in order to get their three ounce jigs to work fine. With these rods, a two ounce jig, and even as limber as they are, it works perfectly to catch the bass and bluefish in the bay here. Now you're going to see the rods I built last winter. You'll see them in action. These are spiral wrapped rods with 12 pound test lead core designed to troll for both the bass and the bluefish. And here you see Fran, who used to work at the Goose Hummock and is an avid angler and very good at it. Uh, he came along and I wanted to get his opinion on both the jigging rods and these light action trolling rods with the uh, spiral wrap system. So now, Fran, you had an occasion to use my uh, light jigging wires. What do you think of those? They were fantastic. I think that's why we outfished the rest of the fleet out there today. Um, little kids find it oh. easy. I, it was the most re easy reeling I think I've done with wire in my life. It's just very easily controlled. You have all the control over the fish. 
<laughs> and the rods didn't load up. They no, still had plenty of guts left in them. They did. Now, how about that 12-pound test with a lead core on it? What do you think of that? that? That is unbelievable. That's another one of those things that just, it, it performs, it allows the lure to go to the proper depth. And when you're fighting the fish, the rod itself does all the work for you. And with the acid wrap rods, they're just now, phenomenal. And that rod wasn't loading up either. They no, had plenty of guts oh, no, left they, in it. There was, there was so plenty. I have no qualms about that handling. Um, the fish we got were maybe 20, 20 pounds maybe. Oh no, there was that, that first one there, that one was all like 28, almost 30 pounds. Oh, okay. they're, they're all like 20, 20 pounds. Well, the one she caught on the lead core line there, yep. there was about 20 pounds. Oh, that was 20. a smaller fish. Yeah. But I mean, if you get a 40 pounder on it, it still handle it. Oh, without any problem. Yeah. yeah, it'd be fun. It, it'd be a longer but, fight, but oh it'd yeah, be fun. I know that's what I mean. You know, that's to use it when you you know you don't have to worry about oh well, I caught more fish than somebody else and I got them in faster than somebody else. You know? Yeah. Well, you even you said you had to yell at me a couple mm -hmm. times about speed. It's true that speed fast doesn't do anything any better. No. Nope. Control is the key. Yeah. Using the rods, you know, bending down. I mean, pulling back, bending down, reeling down. Yeah. Fish. All right. Well, good. As an old salt, you used to be at the Goose Hummock and done a few days of fishing here and there. A couple it's, of days. Yeah. <laughs> That's good to get your opinion on them. Thank I'm you. having a blast designing these rods, let me tell you. I'm tell you, I'm really surprised how well they work. It's just, it, it goes against everything that we've learned years past, how you need the stiffer the rod, the more, it, now it turns out that it's not that way. It's the complete opposite. The more flexible the rod, the better the action and the better yeah. the fight. To a point, to yeah. a point. You yeah. gotta, you know, you can't have it too flexible or else you, you can't feel what the fish is doing. Yeah. This is the big striper that Emily, my mate, had on. It was around a 20 pound fish. Uh, we caught it on the spiral wrapped rods that I built for the 12 pound test lead core. Uh, Emily, like I said, has fished with me a lot and I listen to what she has to say because some of what she tells me goes into how I design and pick the blanks uh, when I want to build rods like this. And she's helped me on another set of rods that I'm going to build this winter for trolling the umbrella rigs to make it easier on my clients. But we'll talk about that later. Okay, Emily, I designed these rods with a lot of what you had to say built into it. So what do you think of them? I like them a lot. You do, huh? Yeah. All right. Well, hopefully that's a nice big blue fish. All right. I learned how to fix reels and repair rods by working part-time at the Goose Hummock a few years ago with a guy named Tom Goudreau, who's a full-time repairman there. And he taught me how to somewhat do what I've been doing now. And what I did was I built prototypes of the rods that I wanted to build, tried them out so I knew exactly what I wanted to produce as a final set of rods. And you saw the uh, wire rods for jigging. Those are one type, and you see Emily here using the rods with a 12-pound test lead core on them, which she fully enjoys. Next, I want to build a set of rods for my umbrella rigs. We use wire up here a lot, and these rigs can sometimes get four and five fish on them. So I want a rod that, uh, which is usually stiff, that will not beat the angler up. So if I can make the rod absorb a lot of the energy of the fish, uh, and rather than, than it go to the angler, I think my clients will be a lot happier and less tired after um, catching these fish. Now, the help I've gotten from the guys at Mudhole before, I'm sure they'll help me get the, the proper blanks and all the proper equipment I'm, need, I'm gonna need to get this done.
This is what the umbrella rig looks like. It can catch uh, two or three fish easily. And that's what the rod looks like, uh, what we've been using now. I want to make mine a little softer in the tip to take a lot of the energy instead of it going into the angler. 